Since I've been talking about conservative values recently, I found a site called Patriot Voices that gives a list of what they consider to be conservative values, so hey, I thought I'd take a look. Now, I want to note that this list has been up for at least a couple of years, so it does make some references to Obama and the like, but overall, I think it's something they still support because it's sure something they haven't taken down. So let's see what Patriot Voices thinks conservatism is, and I'll let you know if I agree with what they say or not. So, right off the bat, they're against abortion, which I guess is no surprise because you get the impression pretty quickly that Patriot Voices are a bunch of far-right religious zealots. Well, I'm not. In fact, I'm an open atheist who has no respect for religion whatsoever. So, clearly, we're going to have some issues here. So, first, they say they respect the dignity of all life, from the unborn to the elderly. Okay, I guess. Of course, you don't find the right wing wanting to fund care for the elderly very often, do you? So, let's be honest here. They're really only talking about abortion. They want to have a constitutional amendment to outlaw abortion, which, yeah, good luck on that. We will almost certainly never see another constitutional amendment in the history of this nation, at least not so long as this country is so ideologically fragmented. So, that's not going to happen. And honestly, I don't care what our founders declared. I care what's factually correct and objectively verifiable, and having a creator simply isn't. As I've pointed out before, these kinds of vague declarations of rights, especially rights that obviously do not exist, are really pretty ridiculous. I have a right to life, except I will eventually die. The whole thing is poetic, not real. There's no way to actually have a defensible right to life if that right can be abrogated and is abrogated at every turn. And they talk about dignity, which is something that comes from within. It's not something that comes from the outside. So what they're really talking about is being able to force their values on others. And as I've said before, people, especially on the right, want to stop people from committing suicide. Even those people who are suffering from painful terminal diseases, people who want to die with dignity? Eh, no, it's the religious right that's most often out in force to oppose those people from being able to control their own destiny. So yeah, I don't have a whole lot of good to say about this one. And unfortunately, it's not getting any better. They also want to defend traditional marriage. Now, I don't have anything against so-called traditional marriage, but I don't oppose non-traditional marriages either. And it's pretty damn hard to find anyone out there who opposes gay marriage on anything but a religious basis. Religion is idiotic, hence I don't care what religion has to say. Now, I think that marriage is important. Having strong marriages forms strong, stable communities, produces more well-adjusted children who go on to form even more stable communities, etc. So, marriage is important. But what's not important are the people who make up the marriage. It doesn't matter what their gender is. It doesn't matter what their skin color is. It doesn't matter what their age is. It matters that they are creating a strong, stable relationship in which the next generation can grow. And I'll be the first to say that the political left has done a lot of damage to that idea. The family is important. And the idea that single mothers and single fathers, people who've never bothered to get married, just use somebody as a sperm donor, I think that whole thing is disgusting. If you can't make a commitment to another person, then you have no business having a child as far as I'm concerned. But I really don't care what the genders of the respective partners happen to be, so long as there's a long-term bond there, not just an emotional bond, but a legal and financial one as well. It matters. But I find it funny that they want to triple the tax deduction for children, thinking that it's going to help families, when it will go to anyone who has a child, whether they're married or not. So on this one, maybe? Promote religious freedom and civil society. Well, I certainly support one of those. Guess which one? Because I think American society in general is crap right now. 
we as a society don't hold anyone accountable for much of anything except for the outrage of the moment which changes to whatever way the wind blows. There's no real social norms anymore. Nothing to which the vast majority of people subscribe. It's whatever the hell you want to do. Just don't piss off social media and you can get away with whatever you want. And I find the whole idea absurd. Now, as far as religious freedom is concerned, you already have it. You can believe whatever you want to believe in your head. Nobody can stop you. What you really want is freedom to discriminate against others based on your religion, figuring that you're in social power and will always be so. Yeah, that's kind of short-sighted. The second that any other religious group has enough power to discriminate against them, you'd better bet they're going to be screaming their fool heads off. We can't go with what crazy people believe. We have to go with what's demonstrably best for society and things like refusing medical treatment for your children because you think an imaginary man in the sky will come through for them. That's not best for society. So believe what you want, but in the real world, you are going to comply with the societal good as determined by the American voter. Nominate and confirm constitutionalist judges and justices. In other words, stack the deck. Let's be honest, that's exactly what they mean. And both sides want to do it. They both want justices that are going to vote their way so they can social engineer the nation. But that's not the purpose of the Supreme Court or indeed any court in the land. There should be no liberal justices. There should be no conservative justices. There should only be justices who are going to leave their political biases at the door and vote on the basis of the only authority that matters in this situation, the Constitution. Anyone who can't do that has no business being on the court. And confirmation hearings are absurd. The only answer to how would you vote on this case ought to be constitutionally... And that ought to be the end of it. Promote educational opportunity and empower parents. In other words, anything goes. Because this has nothing at all to do with educational opportunity. It has to do with pushing woo. It has to do with promoting ignorance. But what about the rights of the students to get a good fact-based education that will help them in the real world? Eh, the religious right doesn't want to hear about that, do they? Because really, I don't want parents in charge of their children's education. Parents, by and large, aren't bright enough to know what's going on. Who do I want to teach math to children? Mathematicians. Who do I want to teach history to children? Historians. Who do I want to teach science to children? Scientists. Those are the people who ought to be directing the educational futures of our children. The last people who should be involved at all are priests and ministers who are probably diddling the kids in the back room anyhow. And that's the thing. I don't want children to turn into miniature copies of their parents. I want children to be better. I want my children to be better than I am. I want them to know more. I want them to be more skilled. I want them to be better people than I was. It's the only way to drive society forward. And I know that's a hard sell, especially to religious fanatics who are watching their beliefs fall apart in society. But that's how things have to be. Educational opportunity cannot mean catering to the lowest common denominator, to the base desires of the least educated in society to produce more idiots like themselves. And that's not just a religious thing, it's got to apply to everyone. We can't keep pushing cultural myths because they're politically correct and convenient narratives. We need to get back to teaching the facts and stop with the emotional coddling nonsense. Schools aren't about how you feel, they're about what you know. Deal with your feelings on your own time. Get your ass back to work. You know, I know this is kind of a short one and one that I really didn't agree with, but I thought it was important to show the difference between a hyper-religious conservative and a secular conservative. Once you eliminate religion from the equation, all of this woo-woo mystical garbage tends to go away, as it should. There's no place in modern society, and certainly not going forward, for imaginary friends and wishful thinking and wanting to keep the world in your ignorant fantasy land. 
we need to move beyond that and be decent human beings that care more about how things work than how they make us feel. And right now, there are no political parties out there who want that. They all want to cater to the lowest common denominators. And that's just screwing us all up. Everything changes.